you mentioned, I mean, this is the second time you mentioned Trump, uh, and you mentioned sort of this new kind of era yeah. after the election of Trump. Right. Uh, are there any thoughts about, you know, what we've seen so far in this these earlier stages of the uh, of the election, of this election year, um, ab- about sort of what this post-Trump world uh, no. is like? Anything that's different <laughs> now? This is just a fun time for us yeah. chattering classes to speculate. Sure. I'm waiting to see good old data. I want, I want to see some more polls. I want, above all, I do want to see what the shakeout is going to be as far as the candidates who emerge on the left. Can they unite enough, even with, say, two or three candidates running for... Well, Ontario might be a good example. Ontario, likewise, will be a, a good measure of just how far Trumpism in its manif- Canadian manifestation does Doug Ford win. With populist outrage. That P.O. Thing, that populist outrage. That's right. So if he does, and uh, Trumpism still looks in a, yes, somewhat maybe diluted form, but uh, then Chernin again looks to be, oh, okay, this is possible. If he has cred, looks viable, then other people will move towards him. We do towards power. Uh, Bremner may not emerge as then a strong enough candidate to create that split on the right. Okay, then will that motivate the left? Uh, as it appears to be in Ontario again, to do strategic voting may not be everything I want, but I'm sure going to vote to keep that other guy, that other PO guy, out of office. Yeah, I mean, how many candidates uh, in you know October? Yeah. Uh, how many of these candidates that we're seeing now are we going to exactly. end up uh, candidates on the left? How yeah. many of them are going to end up? On, are we going to be down to sort of two or three or? F- two or three main candidates as we've often seen in the past? Well, that, that, that I think would be the best case for all of them. Yeah. Uh, or is there a chance that we may have five yeah. different yeah. reasonably prominent candidates? You know, that Silve- Shauna Sylvester stays on That's the right. ballot. Kennedy Stewart still stays on the ballot. Vision puts somebody mm-hmm. forward. Yep. Adrian Carr, I don't think, has said one way or the other still. Yep. Um, is it possible we're going to have a bunch of and uh, yeah, it's possible. and an MPA? But I would tend to think, though, that, and here maybe is the connection, if if it does look like a wholly unacceptable, can, a fearful candidate emerges, left or right, then that would have unifying effects uh, on the other side. The, the strategic voting would justify putting aside your <laughs> the purity of your politics and ideology. Uh, I, mean, I saw it on council, too. The left likes noble losses. They will fight hard, and if they lose, but we fought hard and we stood for what? Uh, the right, uh, the little cynical here, will drive over its grandmother if they think that's the road to power. And, okay, um, I think the left would get their act together, put aside the ideological split. If it looked like Chernin, for instance, was really viable. Right, I mean... But I don't think we're anywhere near there yet. This is where some really good data would be helpful. Sure.